beloved, beloved, greetings to you. Welcome to Faith Without Borders. Uh, so good that you are with us. Glad uh, to be able to kick off this uh, new season. And we are looking forward to an exciting time together. Uh, we uh, are joined by uh, some partners this year. And, um, and so we are just going to go head on and continue with some real and relevant uh, thought-provoking and solutions-driven conversation, uh, looking at uh, everything that's going on and doing our best uh, to bring as many as possible folk uh, on with us so that we can go deep, reason together, and to see how we can continue to facilitate uh, progressive and prophetic uh, dialogue uh, by way of uh, activating uh, spiritual resistance uh, and moral reimagination for what it is that we are called to do for such a time as this. Well, I, uh, I can't help but just, no just note what day today is. And I was reminded of that earlier this morning because you know, I'm not into you know, um, numerology and astrology and all that stuff. Uh, but uh, if, you, if you missed it, today is 2-2-22. Two, two, and apparently when numbers, you know, align like that, something going down, all right? So I checked it out, and uh, very, very significant, you know, uh, what these, you know, num numbers mean. The month, uh, there will be three such numbers in February, all right? 2, 2022, 20, 2, 2022, uh, uh, and of course, 22, to 2022. Whoa! So uh, uh, um, uh, we won't. It says we won't see uh, this 222 sequence again for another century. Um, and so we should take note about what this is all about. According to numerology, this is an extremely powerful sequence charged with energy of duality, partnership, relationship and a balance. As two is the number of partnerships and relationships, love is the main theme, of course, for February uh, 2022. The key lesson for this month, and particularly on the dates that feature the 222 sequence, are to approach life with balance. I like that. Compassion. I like that too. Uh, and cooperation. I like that too. And to seek partnership with uh, uh, others around you to be able to accomplish what it is that you have been purposed to do. So 2222 also marks a new beginning for those who want to escape uh, or work or grow through their past, you know, uh, and relinquish negativity and reach towards possibility or positivity and new possibility. So there you have it. 2222. Hey, we're kicking off the new season, you know, uh, on this day, and uh, I believe in God incidences and not just coincidences. So there you have it. Faith Without Borders here. I'm your host, Pastor Calvin Sauls, and uh, so glad that you're joining us. And this year we are very, very excited, you know, as we also find ourselves, you know, in the middle of kicking off, you know, African American Heritage Month, also known as Black History Month. And apparently for some reason that's become very controversial in you know, uh, these United States of America, but we are going to unapologetically, you see, uh, make sure that we uh, do a Sankofa, and that is look back into uh, black history and then look forward into black futures with all it is uh, that we are called to do and to be about. And part of that, you know, is to stand on the bold and broad shoulders of those who've gone before us and to see farther and even reach higher you know, uh, than uh, they've seen and uh, they have reached. And that's what it's all, all about. And for me, being born and raised uh, in uh, South Africa, it is Global Black History Month, you know, uh, for me, you know, as we celebrate, you know, uh, who we are uh, as people of African descent and to see how we can leverage the pain of the past as a powerful path towards new possibilities. Uh, and so that's what Black History you know, is all about. And our topic today is no exception. So I'm glad today, you know, uh, to welcome uh, friends and guests that are going to be with us to go deep uh, into, you know, our conversation, you know, uh, for uh, today. 
and uh, I want to uh, go ahead and bring them all in. Uh, this year, we are kicking off a very, very strategic partner uh, partnership with the African American uh, Tobacco Control Council here in California. The co-founder of that uh, council is uh, my friend and sister on the front lines, uh, Cal Magruder, uh, who will also, you know, uh, join me, you know, uh, at times as a co-host, and at times mean today. All right. So uh, glad that uh, she's uh, here with us to explore our theme, and then we also have, you know, uh, several of our guests here. So I'm going to uh, see if Carol is with us so that we can get going here and uh, and go deep as to what uh, is on the menu today. Carol, are you there? You're good morning. Good morning, Pastor Sauls. It's That's a pleasure you. to see you yes, and be with you. Me. Good to see you, my sister. Uh, thank you for, uh, first of all, just the partnership that we are going to be having, you know, uh, this year uh, as we're going to be, you know, really you know, looking at ways to save black lives, right? Ways to yes. advance the health, the wellness, uh, 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 the safety and the, the dignity of, you know, uh, black people, not just here in the United States, but of course around the world. And uh, just want to thank you, you know, uh, for that. Uh, Carol, uh, because of the strategic partnership, why don't you tell us a little bit about, you know, uh, the Tobacco Control Council and uh, so that folk can just kind of know, you know, uh, what it's about. And then uh, also, I know our relationship goes way, way back, back right? <laughs> so I'll let you, you know, say a little something, something about that as well. Welcome. All right. All right. Well, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Um, it's my ultimate, my pleasure to be here with you this morning. I'm zooming in. I'm in Atlanta, actually, but because of technology, we can all be together. Um, so I'm Carol Magruder, and I'm co-chair of the African-American Tobacco Control Leadership Council. And we are a California-based group uh, formed in 2008, but our council has been working in commercial tobacco control for decades and decades. And we um, have been at the forefront of the national fight to remove mentholated tobacco products from the market, in particular Newport cigarettes and all those other mentholated products and flavored tobacco in general. So this fight um, has taken us all over the country and it's been um, accelerating because uh, when you know we tilled the soil was dirt, was hard and rocks and we, we got those rocks out and we got some water and we got some fertilizer. And now we're seeing uh, the beginning of the fruition of the work that we are doing. And our mission is to save the 45,000 black people who die every year in this country from tobacco induced diseases. And that's not counting secondhand smoke. That's not counting all the people that get cancers from secondhand smoke from other people that they live with. Uh, that's not counting our asthmatic babies. Uh, that's not counting the poor quality of life that we have if we manage to live with our tobacco induced illnesses. And so we are uh, here to say no more. Uh, we have doubled down and we're breaking bad. We're gonna talk about what breaking bad is, uh, but we have declared that this is the year of menthol. So that doesn't mean pro-menthol. That means this is a year when we are gonna take a quantum leap forward to get to get this job done and to, and to really begin the process to make our communities whole and healthy. And I, I want to say a little bit about myself and Pastor Sauls, as we've been knowing each other for uh, 20 years and, and worked together in the Bay Area, San Francisco Bay Area, and had uh, lost contact. But I was in Los Angeles at the city council meeting several years ago before COVID, and I hear his voice. And I said, Lord, God had sent him to Southern California to help us because that is where the fight is right now for us is in Southern California. That's where our population is, and that's where we're going to be taking on the industry. All right, all right. I like that word quantum leap forward, right? And again, two, 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 all these twos, it's all about strategic partnerships and relinquishing that's with the, that which is negative, you know, and embracing, you know, that which is positive, powerful, uh, uh, and restorative for us. And we're going to get into that as we, uh, as we uh, move forward. Uh, today, our, our, t our theme is, uh, for today's show, is Bridging Black History with uh, Building Black Future. Uh, and uh, to be able to do that, we're gonna we got, we gotta break break some bad, right? And 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 so right. that's the theme that we're gonna be rolling with for this year uh, to build all of our issues and topics around that. And uh, I know Carol, you and I talked about you know what you know uh, this uh, would mean. And uh, so I'm gonna ask you to maybe say a little bit about uh, what breaking bad you know means to you. What does it conjure up when it uh, comes to you, uh, so that we can 
you know, uh, help our folk joining us, you know, uh, from around the country and around the world, you know, just kind of get a sense of what Breaking Bad is all about. Yes. Well, we I borrowed that title from the very uh, popular series that was on uh, several years back, Breaking Bad. And uh, the theme of the series was actually selling, making and selling methyl, uh, methyl, methyl, methyl crystal, crystal method, methamphetamine. So we're not talking about that. But the character in this uh, series was a man who um, had, if he if he had had Obamacare in those days, he might the series might not have happened because he was a chemistry teacher who had to work a part time job at a car wash, um, and and had cancer and had terrible health insurance and found himself in, in this position where he decided that he wanted to um, to jump out of the life that he was living and to make some money so that he would be able to take care of his family. Um, but with the, the theme that I want us to branch on, too, is that uh, we need to do what we need to do to get the job done. And so we need to harness our power and our strength. We need to step boldly into this fight, um, which we're doing every single day. And we need to break bad and, and, and to get it done. So we want to break bad to do good in our community in 2022. <laughs> that, OK, that's a new one. We got to break bad to do good. <laughs> okay, you never, you never, you know, you, you never told me that one, but that's okay. Uh, I'm gonna roll with that. That 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 she is for you. She's always gonna always gonna come up with something new. Uh, uh, so as she was, you know, mentioning that to me, you know, I had to kind of, you know, think about this as well, you know. Uh, and so uh, I just tried to be consistent with 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 who I am and what I'm about. And so Breaking Bad, you know, uh, uh, for me is going to be about breaking bad policies. Right? Uh, we in this fight. Uh, to break bad systems, to break yes. bad, you know, institutions, to break bad habits. Uh, uh, and so it's going to be about, you know, uh, what uh, uh, bad things we need to break from the inside out, personally, uh, collectively, communally, you know, as we, you know, uh, do what it is that we need to do to build beloved community. You know, uh, that's uh, what it's going to be about. So we're going to engage, yes, uh, in analyzing you know, uh, what the bad is, we're going to engage in how do we organize, you know, uh, to bring good, you know, uh, out of this, you know, a bad. And then we're going to mobilize to see how we can, you know, move beyond it and invite folk into, you know, our beloved, com uh, beloved community in the work that we're going to be doing. So as you can see, it's going to be locked and loaded. Uh, 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 conversation-wise, of course, and, and intellectual-wise and, and capacity-wise, right, okay, uh, in terms of what it is that we're going to be about. And, and today, you know, uh, certainly is no exception, you know, as we tackle, you know, uh, the theme uh, that is before us. And just so glad that you are joining us, you know, for this opportunity, you know, as we go into bridging black history with building black future. Uh, uh, that's what it's about, and we're going to go ahead and get, you know, into You cannot bridge anything if you're not willing to check out the terrain where you got to build that bridge, right, to kind of understand where the bridge needs to be coming from and where the bridge needs to be going to. And so it's important that we create a framework uh, for that, and we're going to do that uh, with a, a trailer of a powerful uh, a documentary that's uh, that's coming out uh, entitled Black Lungs, Black Lives. And we're going to let that frame uh, uh, our conversation for today. And then Carol, you know, is going to uh, 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 take it from there, you know, just around uh, what we are, you know, uh, going to be fighting, you know, for this year, you know, in California, but also around the country. And then, yeah. you know, uh, uh, we have taken our fight global you know, around what we need to be doing, you know, uh, about uh, uh, the, the predatory practices of tobacco globally. So we're excited about that and looking forward to it. But uh, let's uh, check out this uh, trailer. It provides us with a framework, and then we'll talk on the other side. All right. Three years ago, I accepted an internship with Truth Initiative. At the time, I thought I knew everything I needed to know about tobacco. But what I knew was just the beginning. One of the greatest marketing coups that took place in the 20th century is transforming menthol cigarette to a black cigarette. During my time with Truth Initiative, I read dozens of research articles 
and stacks of internal documents directly from tobacco industry files. The tobacco industry strategically and successfully infiltrated my community. And while it's true that they targeted many groups, the targeting of the black community has been uniquely damaging. So it was good to see black people in the ads and to see that there were black models and that people saw that and they were very much attracted to that. It was sort of a double-edged sword. They do target everybody, but when they target us, we die disproportionately from it. We know the facts. We have the scientific knowledge that tells us that we die in larger numbers. Tobacco-related diseases are still the number one cause of death in the African-American community. 47,000 African-Americans a year die as a result of tobacco-related diseases. Somewhere in the neighborhood of 90 percent of all African-American civil, religious, political, um, social organizations take money from the tobacco industry. Behind the scenes there were negotiations between the leaders of these organizations and tobacco companies. Because there's money tied to it and money makes things happen. Because of who we are, our lives are constantly at threat. Black Lives Matter, hands up, don't shoot. I can't breathe. I think we're all answering the same question. What is the worth of a black body in the United States of America? Certainly an intersectional fight for us uh, as we seek to deal not just what people you know, I've been tricked into putting into their bodies uh, uh, that uh, challenges their respiratory systems, uh, are causing difficulty to breathe or what's out in the air around environmental racism, but also what we're dealing with uh, in other ways, you know, uh, where we are fighting, you know, for our breaths. Carol, I want to bring you in, you know, to talk a little bit about, you know, what's been going down in California. Last year, we were able to pass a, a historic, you know, uh, a bill in the California you know, uh, State Senate, uh, SB 793, you know, uh, to remove, you know, uh, 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 flavor products, including menthol, you know, uh, from uh, the shelves. Of course, you know, um, that was a huge fight, you know, uh, that, we, that we had. Uh, but of course, you know, as it is, you know, when you, you know, uh, try to break bad, you know, by bringing in good, bad don't just surrender, right? Bad always tries to find a way, and that's the history of this country. Bad always seems to find a way or look for a way to get back to, to kind of, you know, reintroduce itself in upgraded and updated ways. Uh, so do you want to just say a little bit about, you know, uh, what we're dealing with this year, the fight that we are taking on uh, as we uh, uh, make our way, you know, into, you know, a 2022? So these past few years with COVID and uh, the recall for Governor Newsom. And so people, a lot of people didn't notice that in June of 2020, California became the second state after Massachusetts to pass a law that was signed into law by Governor Newsom to take flavored tobacco products off of the market. So this is a, a huge step in this historic fight that we've had about methylated tobacco products. So uh, we got the law passed, got it signed, and the tobacco industry promptly began collecting signatures to call for a referendum. And so now this matter will be before the voters of California uh, in November of 2022. And how we got here was that, um, and so the big fight as we fought about Senate Bill 793, and Ed Sanders is going to help with this when he comes on, but um, the, was the, the fight was, uh, as we got into California, was that we were doing something to Black people uh, to take what they like off the market while we were leaving what kills white people on the market for white people to kill themselves. That was the logic. Um, but the truth, the history was that um, in 2008, Pre President Barack Obama signed the Tobacco Control Act. And at that time, all of the flavors for cigarettes were taken off the market except for menthol. And that was um, a bargain, a deal a bargain made in hell. There's a research paper on that now of how many lives have been lost since 2008 till nine because these products <clears throat> remain on the market. So when the menthol was left on the market, um, advocates uh, and, and Valerie Yerger, Dr. Valerie Yerger at UCF, UCSF was sounding the bell. We didn't think anything could be done, but the Congressional Black Caucus under the leadership of Donna Christensen put in an amendment to that act that that charged the FDA to put menthol at the top of its list to research it and to make a decision about what would be done about it. 
And so we know that the industry, their one of their biggest tactics is, is simply to delay because they know every year that they delay, there are more people that are going to be addicted. They have more customers. So the FDA did studies over these since 2008. Uh, they've come out with two studies that have said that taking menthol off the market would be in the interest of the public health of the United States of America. Since that time, the European Union, which is made up of countries in Europe, has taken it off the market, menthol. Brazil has banned it. Ethiopia banned it. And our neighbor to the north, Canada, has taken it off the market. But the, because of our, our racialized history here, the conversation is about Black people. So all of a sudden, what Black people want, you know, we want a lot of things other than Newport cigarettes, but, but we should be able to get that. We should be able to keep that because we want that. And the reason that people think we want that is because the tobacco industry came into our neighborhoods, physically gave out cigarettes to children in all of our urban areas as young as nine years old. Um, Dave Chappelle, that's how he started smoking at 14 in Washington, D.C. He was given free cigarettes in the metro station. And, and so and we're li living the legacy of that racialized predatory targeting that also um, you know, advertised in Jet and Ebony, our magazines, our newspapers, the National Newspaper Publishers Association. Um, the industry gave money to every Black organization in the country, and that's well documented in Dr. Valor Yurgo's Smoking with the Enemy paper that was written years ago. Um, and that's changing big time. But in those years when they were doing that, that bought the silence of many of the people who should have been defending us. And so we saw the reaction when the e-cigarette e industry targeted the youth starting, they started with the white youth um, with these e-cigarettes. We saw the big clap back about that in congressional hearings and laws passed, but we're still waiting for our day on Congress to hear about specifically the predatory targeting of African-Americans with these products, all the lives that have been lost all of the families that have been ruined, all of the millions and billions of dollars that have gone out of the community to buy our own death and destruction. And so that's what we're breaking bad about this year in 2022. And that's what we're going to put a stop to. You said it, and I want to connect with it as I uh, bring in uh, my brother, Ed Sanders. Uh, and that is the delay tactic. I mean, let's be clear. Let's be clear. Let's be very clear. This delay tactic is rooted it's rooted in one, deception, right? And two, denial. You see, when you're dealing with uh, uh, racial capitalism and the tobacco industry is a prime example of that, that, how that functions, not just in the West in general, but right here in the United States. Uh, when you deal with that and how you know, uh, that you know, uh, becomes predatory, you know, uh, in, in the black community, you know, uh, uh, it just starts with the whole strategy of deception, denial, and then the delay, right, to undo, you know, what, what needs to be done. And, and I think that's very, very important for us to, you know, uh, just to underscore, you know, uh, uh, Carol, and, and you've touched on that. Uh, I want to bring in, you know, uh, Ed Sanders, who is the uh, campaign manager for the Los Angeles Families Fighting Flavor Tobacco uh, on the front lines, you know, right here. I'm glad to uh, stand and walk shoulder to shoulder with him, you know, as we embark uh, uh, or as we stay on the battlefield, you know, uh, as we uh, sing about it, Ed, in church, right? Uh, but, Ed, can you say a little bit, you know, uh, about the campaign you know, uh, uh, our, our, our strategy, the fight that we're in, you know, uh, and, 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 and just the work that, that, that lies ahead, you know, around just making sure that we, that we, that we grow the good that we've been able to accomplish last year, right, as the bad is creeping, you know, uh, back to try and, you know, uh, 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 take us back. Ed? Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for having me this morning. Um, you know, I think the, the first... Uh, you know, as you opened um, with the uh, with the uh, the conversation about the numerology and the twos, I was kind of drawn to one of my favorite songs, which is a song by uh, Jay Z about twenty two twos. And I was thinking a lot about um, sort of the the connection between hip hop as a cultural expression as we start to look at African American history this month. Um, 
hip hop being one of these windows into black culture, right? Where you get a chance to see um, not just the good, but the bad, um, whether we're talking about misogyny or uh, quick tempered violence, you know, it, we are, we express it, we see it. Um, and, and in that we see these habits that we need to break to tie it back into today's show. Um, one of the habits that, that, that comes out of our culture and, and what we see is just this acceptance of, um, what is bad for us? Uh, you know, our history as a, as a people in the United States, um, is certainly, you know, uh, we get the scraps off the table. And so in a lot of ways we get accustomed to what is bad and either one accept it as, you know, our fate or our reality or accept you know, some notion that we can't change it. Um, and when we start talking about mentholated cigarettes and flavored cigarettes, as uh, as Carol outlined, you know, we have to really understand the historical context of, of this fight. Um, this is this is not a new product. This is a product, uh, as Carol laid out, that was developed and targeted at our community. And, you know, it is that targeting that is so important. Um, you know, as, as she laid out, uh, black smokers are, are picking up menthols because the tobacco industry chose them and their forebears to to smoke menthols. Um, and that is such an important dynamic as we as we move into this era now where as a country we are, you know, the the issue of race remains at the forefront. And um, politics is the space that I operate in. And, and politics is really the expression of any group of people on how they wish to be governed. And, you know, what we're seeing that as a country is a, is a reaction to George Floyd's death. Um, you know, I honestly will tell you, I was surprised by the outpouring of support from from other ethnicities around this issue of policing um, in our community. And it gives me hope in politics. It gives me hope as an American that we can make this country, this experiment work. Right. And and we have to always remember that this experiment of governance in the United States is just that. Uh, it takes us to play a role in it, to make the changes, to make governance and life in America work. That stated, what's been happening is we've been leading efforts throughout the state of California that align with efforts across the country and nationally to end the sale of flavored tobacco, and more specifically, end the sale of menthol flavored tobacco. Um, I can't think of a bigger civil rights health priority than ending the sale of menthol cigarettes. Uh, it is directly related to the deaths of 45,000 African Americans every year. And, you know, just that statement alone, when you look at it and you look at how the tobacco industry is targeting this, we've got to move. Um, when you now look at how the tobacco industry uses menthol and flavors to target our young people, this is where we shouldn't be sitting down. This is, this should bring everyone out of their seat. Um, it, 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 on the local level, when we have conversations with folks, you know, that, that are smokers, they are sometimes resigned to their fate, right? I smoke. I shouldn't have started these things. I wish I could stop them. And you have to understand that we're talking about an addictive product, right? When they were given the product, they were probably young. They were probably induced by a giveaway. They were probably induced by a, a, a peer pressure to start smoking a product that was addictive. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you can't you can't look past that either, because there are few products that are open on the open market commercially sold that are addicted. Uh, you know, the prime one is tobacco and it is cigarettes. Um, when you look at how black smokers accept their fate. I don't wish that for them. I wish that they could find a way to break that habit and, and find the health. But when you talk to them about how our young people are being targeted, they now understand, you know what, I do need to act. And it's that sentiment that we're building on. And, and as we talk to people and we grow our coalition, LA Families Fighting Flavored Tobacco is looking to pass an ordinance in Los Angeles. It is one of several cities in the state of California. Uh, it would join uh, big cities like San Francisco, Oakland, uh, San Jose, uh, we, you know, these are some of the largest populations in the state of California. Long Beach has moved. Pasadena has moved. Um, you know, we expect Los Angeles. We're hopeful about San Diego. Um, and so you can start to see the large cities in California, the large population centers, particularly the ones where African-Americans live, 
are taking efforts to end the sale of menthol at the local level. And what that says is that local leaders get it. Um, and when we speak to local elected officials, they get it. When you speak to local community groups, they get it. Um, what we are fighting is a headwind, right? And it is, it is as I laid out in, in sort of my opening about hip hop, it is sort of this culture, this, this acceptance, and it doesn't need to be. And it takes, it takes efforts like this, this podcast today for, for people to understand that, you know what, once I look at this, there is really no need for menthol to be on the market. Mm -hmm. um, once we remove menthol, we can start to get towards a better health for our community. Um, the efforts on the policy level, Los Angeles is close. We are asking folks to weigh in with the city council, um, ask the city council to uh, redraft an ordinance, an ordinance that has been drafted by the city attorney. A few tweaks need to happen to it, but you know, very short order. Uh, the, the council will bring it forward. We hope to have it passed and we hope to have the mayor sign it and, and have a local tobacco ordinance in place. All while on the state side, there is a campaign and a referendum building towards November where we'll protect SB 793 at the ballot box. All right. That, that, there you have it. I mean, that, you know, you got to plan our work and work our plan. Ed, thank you for just laying out the roadmap for us as we as we move forward. Uh, we want to welcome those who are joining us on Facebook Live. We've got folk from South Carolina, folk from South Africa, uh, uh, the folk from the Inland Empire, you know, are, are with us. The smoke out folk uh, over there from the Inland Empire. Good to uh, see you all with us. Uh, my sister Sandy Cook, I see you. I see you. Uh, Jerry Mackey, I see you. Uh, so, uh, so just good to uh, have you know uh, all of you uh, joining us. Uh, feel free to uh, make a comment or send a question, you know, uh, for us as we uh, as we as we move on. And, uh, and Pastor Sauls, can I add in a little bit more on onto what uh, Ed was just saying? Well, so before before you add in, I want I, I want to I want to I was going to come to you with a question, and then you can do both. How about that? Ed that mentioned forty five thousand deaths a year. These are intentional deaths, right? And, mm -hmm. uh, and I know, Carol, there's always this argument uh, going on, and this is how we, after you transition to Pastor Kaja, you know, around just the unintentional, you know, uh, consequences, you know, uh, when we talk about ordinances and people talking about us taking people's civil rights away, you know, around that. So I, I just want, I want you to just talk a little bit about that, but start with what you were going to say. Uh, uh, as it relates to uh, Ed's comments. Sure. So I just wanted to just add on to Ed because we we talk, people might be a little confused because we have a state law. We've got all these cities at play. And so commercial tobacco control is a local fight. It's about your city. It's about your county. And we build a quilt of power out. And that's how you get the state to do something. And so and that's been happening. And we continue to work um, until it's done. So we can't let a city wait and say, okay, we're gonna wait till November to see what the state's gonna do because the cities and counties have the absolute authority to take these products off the market, regardless of what happens in November, which we have we have every faith that our, our law will stick and we will have a statewide uh, restriction on the, on the sale of these products. So we continue to work city by city, county by county, and, and it's about community norm change. So our children, where I grew up in Bayview Hunters Point in San Francisco, which is the district that Malia Cohen represented when she brought the San Francisco law, I, I voluntarily bust myself to a better neighborhood so that I could get a good education for high school. So I rode an hour and a half each way on the bus, rode past Baby Hunters Point with liquor stores on all the corners on Third Street, rode past the Western Edition, the Fillmore, all the liquor stores there out into the pristine avenues in San Francisco where they did those stores just didn't even exist. So our children who, who grow up, that's, that's the vector, that's the media, that's the advertising for these products. And that's one reason. Another reason why we, we need them out is because we need to have a community norm change and we need to have communities that are healthy, that have juice bars instead of uh, liquor stores and, and, and tobacco outlets. Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. the, the, a big part of this fight is believing that we can have healthy, wholesome neighborhoods that look good, that people feel safe in. And so that's the bigger picture. Um, and then I'm going to talk about the unintended consequences and the intended consequences. So one of the one of the fights, one some of the rhetoric, and this is what you're going to be hearing more and more as we heat up, is that taking these products off the market is going to criminalize black people and brown people. It's going to give the police an excuse to come 
and harass us, arrest us, kill us like Eric Gardner out of New York, who was allegedly selling single cigarettes. And so we are the first to acknowledge that we have a huge problem in this country uh, with policing up at black and brown people and the need for reform. And we are working on that reform and we must work on the reform simultaneously with the reform that we need to get the biggest killer, the biggest predator, the biggest targeter of black people, which is the tobacco industry. So the biggest wolf doesn't get a pass to keep roaming in our community, addicting and killing us while we deal with the civil rights issues that we must deal with and that we are dealing with and that are very painful to all of us. So those things have to happen simultaneously. And that's and that's what and that's what we are all working on and, and what we all want. So we can't, you know, the unintended is 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 less than than the intended, which is the forty five thousand that are dying each and every year from these products. Yeah, yeah. That that is, I mean that is just such a uh, uh, an insulting argument. And uh, and that argument, you know, in so many ways is being made, you know, uh, by those who are sleeping with the enemy. I mean, let's just mm-hmm. put it out mm-hmm. there. You know, you, you, you mm-hmm. got to call it what it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, and unfortunately, you know, uh, that includes, you know, uh, some in the faith community, right, in terms of that. And so, uh, uh, and so you know, uh, we, we refer to the paper you know, uh, entitled Smoking with the Enemy. So we know that also means in so many ways that we have some folk sleeping with the enemy, you know, uh, as well. Uh, Sylvia Jackson out of the England Empire, you know, uh, says it is our duty to save our youth. Sylvia, right on, right on. Ashe, my sister. Uh, She says Riverside, Marino Valley, and San Bernardino are on board. Uh, We have seven black churches on our African-American faith-based advisory board and counting. And uh, she is the certified engagement coordinator, you know, uh, for the faith-based community. And I know we're going to hook up with her uh, at some point as we, you know, uh, add, you know, uh, continue, you know, uh, to uh, fight uh, the good fight here in Los Angeles for what needs to, uh, what needs to happen. Uh, certainly, the faith community plays a very, very important role in this. And uh, so glad to have uh, uh, my brother, uh, and uh, uh, and my friend, Pastor John Cager, you know, uh, who is the senior pastor at uh, the historic and history making. It's very important. You don't have to, you can't just be historic, right? You got to be yeah. history making too, because it's about the future, right, Pastor Cager? The historic and history making Ward AME, you know, church in Los Angeles. He also serves as the uh, president uh, of the Los Angeles. You know, uh, uh, um, um, Council for Religious Leaders, uh, um, uh, out and about, prophetic, progressive, and uh, uh, straight up into the social gospel. And, uh, uh, and that's what I love about him. Pastor Kaja, glad that you are with us. Uh, if you would just share a little bit around, you know, how does this connect, you know, with, you know, uh, our call as the faith community in terms of, you know, seeking uh, the well-being, the shalom uh, of the city, and and of course those who live within that city, praying to the Lord, you know, uh, on its behalf, because in its welfare we find our welfare, our well-being, or our shalom. Right? Uh, this is a, a huge fight, and I know the AME has taken uh, some stances. The United Methodist Church has done so, and several other uh, civic organizations. Uh, 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 fraternities, sororities, but but we all know that the faith community is a very, very important anchor when it comes to securing the health and the safety of the black community. Uh, would you share some thoughts just around a theological framework around uh, what we are called to be about, you know, in this fight? Thank you, uh, Reverend Sauls. Let me just first of all say there is there are few examples of evil that are as blatant as big tobacco. Mm. Um, the effect of big tobacco on community of colors, particularly those of us in the African diaspora, have been devastating over the last 300 years. In your own, people don't realize the tentacles and the tendrils that it has in your own country, uh, uh, Pastor Saul, South Africa, British American tobacco, South Africa, which controls 75% of the market, (laughs) is owned by a Los Angeles hedge fund that's fronting for American 
big tobacco. Hmm. So they're not the only, <laughs> you know, devastating African Americans in America. They're devastating Africanized people around the world, Zimbabwe, South Africa, Lesotho, all over. And for us in the faith community and in the black community, we've been complicit in it. And our complicity uh, goes to the goes strictly to the point of we have allowed big tobacco to addict us to their money. Mm. We have African American and African politicians who will find every reason possible to accept big tobacco's money for scholarship programs or such and such. We'll let them sell to our people. Uh, so, because, you know, they'll, their, their money is doing good. But what we're really saying is we'll let them pimp our people. Hmm. We will let them exploit our people. We will let them take advantage of our people for two or $3. And I was very hurt uh, when, uh, you know, I saw around the country, we had faith leaders who were trying to equate uh, access to to flavored cigarettes and 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 menthol as some sort of social justice Ooh. issue. You know, Ooh. everyone pointed to Eric Garner. Well, he was shot because he was carrying Lucy's. And if we ban uh, uh, flavored tobacco and if we ban ban menthol, you know, that will just lead to more of those incidents. It's insulting uh, number one because it assumes that we as black people aren't disciplined enough to understand uh, 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 that. Uh, uh, there are certain behaviors we should stay away from, but it's insulting even more so because big tobacco and the marketing firms they use uh, have determined that we are gullible mm -hmm. and that we will fall for any argument. From a theological standpoint, we're told by uh, Jeremiah the prophet, you can't heal a wound by saying it's not their peace, peace, and there is no peace. We cannot ignore the effects of tobacco on our community, but more importantly, we cannot ignore the fact that big tobacco has specifically targeted us, my generation, my parents' generation, my children, and my grandchild's generation using whatever means they can. If they have to use uh, uh, cartoons or, or, or children's ditties, they'll do that. If they have to change their marketing and put, you know, Kente on their packaging, they'll do that. <laughs> they have to find, you know, Michael Jordan, and Kobe Bryant and stick. It, they, they will do whatever they can to grab our market because they know that if they can exploit us, if they can addict us, they can keep us as a perpetual market. I, I shared with some of you all, my family is from Maryland and Virginia. You know, my, 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 my generations of cagers pick tobacco. And tobacco, uh, for those who've never touched the tobacco leaf, it's a slimy, sticky, uh, a nasty substance that you, once you touch it, you, you, you really can't get rid of it. Our preachers who have gotten involved with big tobacco as a social justice issue, you know, it's gotten over this sticky Ooh. and it's slimy. And now they can our politicians up in Sacramento Lord have mercy. Take What's campaign up? money from big tobacco. It's sticky, sticky, and it's, slimy, yes, and it's sure. gotten into them. And, 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 and because of that, it should be a no brainer that we ban a uh, mentholated uh, uh, cigarettes and flavored tobacco because it's killing us. Mm. But we've allowed big tobacco's money to get all over us and corrupt us. God is not honored by that. Mm -hmm. And God will hold those accountable who allow his people to be exploited for big tobacco's money. And so uh, I, I'm going to just close with a reference to the theology of the streets. My Lord. All money ain't good money. <laughs> and big tobacco money, uh, I, I, we, 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 we really need to list. We really need to show who's taking big tobacco's money and let our people know who's selling them out. Lord Ooh. have mercy. All money All right. ain't good money. All Look, right. Preach. I think, Preach. I think that's a scripture that will enter uh, the Preach. word uh, straight out of Crenshaw Boulevard there, <laughs> Uh, uh, we, we'll, we'll work in Adams and, uh, you know, uh, you know, where, where water is located as well. We'll, we'll work it in. But but so, so, so well said, you know, in terms of just, you know, how uh, uh, this uh, uh, it's time to get unstuck. 
right? We have allowed that which is bad. Uh, uh, we have been silent about it. Uh, 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 we have connected that silence with acquiescence. Uh, uh, that silence and acquiescence uh, then gets connected with complicity. Uh, uh, and that is a recipe that results in indifference, right? And in so many ways, you know, uh, that's, where, that's where we find, you know, uh, ourselves. Uh, Carol, I want to I wanna bring you back in because, you know, uh, Pastor Cage referred to how do we heal wounds, right? And, um, and it's so very important uh, to, to realize that, you know, we're not trying to condemn smokers, right? No, we're uh, not. Because the approach that we are taking, you know, uh, is a public health approach, right, that starts with prevention, uh, that goes into intervention, uh, that believes in restoration, right? You know, uh, uh, and, and, and criminalization is not even in that equation, you see, uh, around that. So I think it's very important, you know, uh, for us just to understand this public health framework that we are coming from. And uh, I want to invite you to just say a little bit, you know, about that because it connects with uh, the, the plan that Ed outlined, but also not just the plan, but there's also a programmatic uh, aspect right. to that in terms of That's how right. we want to say, you know, to, you know, social justice organizations, grassroots organizations, and the faith community. Mm -hmm. You know, you can be part of the solution, you know, uh, as we you know, uh, fight, you know, uh, it's a fight that's, yes, in the streets, but it's also a fight that can emanate from the sanctuary, right? It's a fight that uh, that eman it can emanate from mason halls, right? It's a fight that can emanate from sororities, fraternities, right, uh, the, uh, and all of that. Uh, 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 all of us, you know, uh, need to be in this fight just because of the destruction uh, that it, ha it has caused and the consequences of the addiction. I mean, the, the tobacco industry, you know, uh, 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 I mean, I think their slogan is addiction by any means necessary. That's kind of how they would probably manipulate and conquer those words from Malcolm X, right? Addiction by That's any right. means necessary. That's right. Uh, so Carol, just say a little bit about this public health, you know, strategy. Sure. So, so uh, I, you know, I, just as I have history with you, I also have some wonderful history with Ed Sanders and with senior pastor Cager because we worked on Proposition 56, which was the last tobacco tax that was passed in the state of California that added $2 to each package of cigarettes sold. And the same detractors that are trying to keep menthol on the market also fought against increasing cigarette prices. Because when we know that we increase cigarette prices, that's, that's a deterrent for young people in and of itself. But part of that tax is then taken and funded the programs that we are running and working in our community because we know that we can't just take an addictive, a deadly addictive product off the market and not have anything in its place. So there are already many things in its place. And a lot of that is because we fought for Proposition 56, the tobacco tax. So there, there are, and, and now we also have some experience in what to do with the funding. And we have a, we have a California Department of Public Health that is truly looking to uh, increase health equity to eliminate the disparities and to adjust to ad address the issues um, that 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 are the social determinants of health that that are at the base of all of the disparities that we see. So it's it's about race, but it's also about our position in this in this in this world in this state. So we have the African American Statewide Coordinating Center, Amplify.love. That is the website, and we have taken on cessation. Um, under the leadership of Dr. Karen Beard. And we are creating um, pods all over the state. And now we have so much virtual work that we can do that where we can reach people to hold our people's hands, to help them to uh, utilize existing services, to understand how racism and the stresses that we have contribute to many of the unhealthy behaviors and addictions that we have, because it's not a choice, many of these things. And that's the thing is once they get you hooked then you're addicted to something, which is a totally different animal than just a bad habit or something you want to change. Um, so there are just many programs that we have. And so uh, we, we're putting our arms around African-American smokers, smokers who smoke these flavored tobacco products. Um, our churches are involved. We have No Menthol Sunday. Um, and that's a way for churches to get on board with this, to provide services and support 
for people to know that they can stop these products. And we have so many African-American leadership groups that have just really stepped up. And I just want to give a shout out to Delta Sigma Theta Sorority. Um, they were the first, the largest group to take on and, and have a resolution supporting taking menthol off the market. At that time, we were trying to get the FDA to do something. The NAACP, the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, our oldest civil rights organization in this country, passed the national res resolution in 2016. Um, our California State Conference has, has, has voted to support Senate Bill 793 and support saying yes to the health of our Black kids um, and, and put that as a priority. Uh, the National, the, the Black Nurses Association, the links. So we have many leadership groups who are stepping up and who are saying these products have to go. And we also understand that passing a law is not magic. We passed the Voting Rights Act 50 years ago, Pastor Cager, but we're still fighting for that. Mm -hmm. And so when something's mm -hmm. worth fighting for, then you fight for it. And so passing, keeping this law, it's not the beginning, it's not the end, it's the middle. And we're committed to seeing this through. And we are at the helm of this fight and, and getting justice, health justice for our communities and giving our people everything that they need. Just as we've been so perniciously targeted by the industry, now we need to be aggressively marketed and, and serviced and helped to undo this damage, to, to get a handle on that. And so, and that's what we're working with. Uh, the Los Angeles County Health Department is on board. They're, they're rolling out some cessation services that are community directed and driven. And so this is, this, is, this is a huge fight. It's complex and we're in it for the long haul. So this is our year of, of menthol and we are gonna get that done. And so we are actually gonna have a national conference in Washington, DC in September. Uh, we will have some community scholarships to pay for people to, from the community to come because we want this to be our community, be involved along the way. We're having a webinar on May 19th uh, with the latest research on uh, the, the deal made in health, that, that the public health deal that left menthol off the market in the first place. So as we, as we break back this year, we'll be coming back and giving updates on all these wonderful things that are happening as we engage our community to get menthol out of our community once and for all. All right, all right. There, there, there you have it. The, the roadmap is set, and, and it's all hands on deck because, yes, it is about uh, the lives of black people. Uh, uh, these lives matter, and they are worth the fight. And I think that's very, very important for us you know, to realize that in the work uh, that, we are, uh, that we are doing. I want to, uh, once again, Ed, bring you in. Uh, just to uh, uh, add anything, you know, around, you know, how we will be strategizing, you know, throughout the state uh, uh, this year. Uh, uh, and, and as we, you know, uh, uh, bring in all uh, the various sectors, right, the faith community, you know, uh, social justice organizations, grassroots organizations, you know, our, uh, our Panhellenic councils, our, our, our Mason, you know, our, 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 our Masonic, you know, associations. Uh, just a little bit more, Ed, just around the strategy that we are looking at to, one, of course, fight, you know, what Big Tobacco is trying to overturn in this good law that we passed, you know, uh, SB 793, uh, but then also, you know, how do we, you know, uh, 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 we'll be building, you know, from the bottom up as we uh, uh, continue to fight. No, thank you. And, and, and this is, um, you know, a very important part as we start talking about this year, uh, the the referendum that comes before the California voters in November is really a simple question. You know, do you support uh, the bill SB 793 and, and ending the sale of flavored tobacco in California? We know it's a very popular, um, we, we expect to win at the polls in November, um, but there's a campaign, you know, and we, we've got to do the work of electoral campaigning. And, and in that, you know, this is, this is where um, I think you see the excellence of the African-American community come forward. Um, you know, we're no strangers and to uh, talking about the tough issues and bringing that forward, but it takes leadership. And, you know, to those that are listening to this, I would I would first say get organized and get engaged. Go to yes to protect kids.org, sign up so that you receive updates from the state campaign. Um, you know, again, the election is in November, so you'll start to see the 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 uh, rhythm of of communication pick up as the as the the focus turns towards those elections. 
Um, but once you're once you're starting to get look in at the local level, um, you know what what we know and what I've actually had the benefit of doing is speaking to African American elected at the municipal level throughout the state. And you know, just for those on the the podcast, we have. Uh, an amazing representation across the state of African Americans elected to city councils and mayors throughout the state of California. And overwhelmingly, they are starting to endorse this proposition so that what we see are Black leaders coming forward to join this effort. Um, and, you know, you for, to those listening, know that you're not alone. We are in this fight together, and you've got leaders that that are joining it. Um, I know of an organization called the Black Leaders Against Tobacco and Justice. So this conversation today uh, actually dovetails into the launch of an organization next week. Um, we will kick off on Thursday at a press conference at 10 a.m. in Los Angeles. Um, again, if you want more information on it, go to yes2protectkids.org and, and send a note there that way. Or um, you can reach uh, me at ed at esadvisorsgroup.com um, and happy to share more information that way. But as you as this uh, campaign unfolds, you will see a, a well-organized African-American community speaking out against uh, the, the, the unscrupulous campaign that we expect from the tobacco industry. Great, great, great. Thanks for that, Ed. Appreciate it. Again, uh, just to remind you, as we welcome, you know, our folks joining us from uh, Atlanta, Georgia, uh, and, uh, uh, and New York. There you go. Uh, glad that you all are with us. Uh, uh, so we got South Carolina in the house, Inland Empire in the house, uh, 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 the Big Apple, uh, uh, the Peach State. Watch out now. And, uh, and so glad that you all are uh, with us. Uh, and appreciate your 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 comments, you know, uh, with us. You know, we've been we've been talking about bridging Black history with building Black future. I want to ask, you know, before I ask Carol for her final comments, Pastor Kaja, as you look at that theme, bridging Black history with building Black future, what does that stir up, you know, uh, in your spirit, uh, as you know, all of us preparing ourselves now to engage, just. Uh, um, uh, not just who we are, right, but where we're coming from, but more importantly, where we're going. Uh, can you, you know, uh, just give us some uh, a sense of a, uh, a spiritual framework, if you will, around how this bridging uh, can take place and this building can take place? I think uh, it's critical for us to remember, to recognize that <laughs> what propelled the slave trade in the United States was the uh, uh, of tobacco, the farming of tobacco on America's East Coast in the uh, in the 1600s. When you read the 1619 Project, you know uh, once they discovered that folks in London enjoyed tobacco, <laughs> tobacco uh, 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 imports uh, from uh, the Carolinas uh, uh, increased a hundredfold in a couple of years, and they had to bring in black slaves. What does that tell us? Big tobacco is Pharaoh. Hmm. And for African Americans and, and Africanized people around the world, we have to stand up to Pharaoh and rebuke Pharaoh. And we know that when we stand up, God will be on our side. I know that you've done hundreds of funerals, as have I, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Reverend Sauls. Mm -hmm. And the people that we have buried because of tobacco and tobacco-related illnesses is just staggering. We can stop that. If we stand up to Pharaoh, we can stop having to make accommodations for family members who can't come because they were on oxygen or they're breathing through their throats because they got a trach hmm. because they smoked for 60 years. We can stop dealing with issues of our people having emphysema and, and, and asthma related diseases because of the smoking. We can improve the health level of our people. We can improve the quality of life in our, of our people. We can improve the prospects for our seniors if we can just rebuke Pharaoh and uh, in this case, tell Big Tobacco to let our people go. My Lord, Doc, Doc, you in deep. And we can Amen. also say that uh, uh, Pharaoh has no clothes on, right? <laughs> Pharaoh's standing naked. And the sad thing is so many folk that look like us are running, you know, with garments to cover up Pharaoh and make him, you know, uh, look good, even though, you know, uh, 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 he's out there naked, continuing to exploit uh, our people. Uh, Carol, we're breaking bad, my sister. 
We're breaking uh, bad. Uh, <laughs> breaking bad in 2022. <laughs> breaking bad in 2022. Breaking bad. Uh, uh, any any last thoughts, you know, uh, from you, you know, uh, in terms of just the work, you know, uh, that lies ahead. I know uh, uh, you've been in it, you know, uh, we've been in it, and we're going to still be in it for the long haul. Why? Because it. Yes. it is about the future of our people. Why? Because it's about the future of our children. Why? Because it's about the future of our communities. Why? Because it's about the fact that God loves us, and God is about ruach. God is about breath, right, uh, and spirit, and breathing all of that into us. And uh, there are so many schemes and systems that seek to take that breath away, you know, uh, from yes. us, uh, yes. informally, formally, legislatively, you know, uh, uh, lustfully and otherwise. And so it is yes. so, so important that we understand and realize, you know, what this fight is about. Uh, mm -hmm. Any uh, uh, concluding thoughts from you? Uh, yeah, I just want to say, you know, when we say I can't breathe, we want to include the tobacco industry in that, that we can't breathe because literally they take our breath away. Um, and I want to let people know that they can get in touch with us. Our website is savingblacklives.org, savingblacklives.org. And uh, we were saving Black lives before Black lives mattered. So we are in this. And I, I want to let people know that I worked on all of the issues facing our community. When I first started doing tobacco control, people were like, well, why are you, why are you working on that? You know, because we have so many other issues. And I've worked on all of them and I continue to. But this should be in our top five priorities going forward until we get it done, until we get these products out of our community. And we can do it. We absolutely can. And, and with, with Pastor Cager, when, you know, when we, when we lose a Black grandparent, the role that our Black grandparents play in our communities, that, that their Black grandparents are almost as important as the parent. And that's part of our African culture and tradition. And when we are losing these people prematurely, it, it does irreparable intergenerational harm, mm -hmm. and irreparable intergenerational harm. And we need to look yeah. at it like that. So I'm in it for the children, but I'm all, also in it for our, 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 our adults and our seniors who, who deserve to have a good life and, and deserve to be have a good quality of life for the life that they have on this earth. So indeed, this fight uh, is intergenerational. This fight uh, is intersectional. Uh, this fight is transnational. I want to give a shout out to my brother uh, straight out of Berkeley, California, uh, Pastor Ambrose F. Carroll, Green the Church in the House, and my fellow uh, Atlantic, you know, fellow for a racial uh, uh, equity. Uh, we're going to connect because all of this, you know, come together in terms of just the environmental racism uh, uh, and that uh, uh, environmental justice or environmental holiness, uh, Pastor Carroll, that you uh, that you work with, so uh, so we'll 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 hook up and and bring it all together. I want to thank uh, my co-host today uh, uh, and uh, and partner and friend uh, Carol Magruder. She is the co-founder of the African American Tobacco Control Council here in California, and uh, um, and we're looking forward to our ongoing partnership together. Uh, also, uh, we want to express our appreciation to Pastor John Cager, uh, who joined us, uh, senior pastor. Uh, of the Ward Amy Church here in Los Angeles, and he also serves as the president of the Los Angeles Council uh, of Religious Leaders. Thank you so much, my brother. Also, Ed Sanders, he's the campaign manager of the Los Angeles Families Fighting uh, Flavor Tobacco. It was uh, great to have all of you here and really appreciate, you know, your presence uh, here with us uh, today. Um, we want to, we started off, you know, kind of going back and forth with the two, 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 two. Uh, now, before I make my concluding remarks, uh, I think I will, uh, if I want to get back into the studio, right, uh, I think it's essential, important, critical for me to say happy birthday to Felicia Morris, uh, owner of uh, uh, Morris Media, uh, where we are emanating from right here. Uh, off a of crane show in Lamert Park, straight out of South LA. Uh, Felicia, happy 55th birthday, my sister. I just outed your age, but hey, I'm 55 too, so pfft. hey, you know, what, what, what's that? Felicia, know that I appreciate you and uh, really celebrate our partnership and uh, the work that you do here for our community uh, is certainly significant. So happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday. Uh, uh, we started off with uh, this whole thing about numerology and two, 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 all these twos, right? Uh, I want to just uh, close, you know, uh, by, by sharing 
again, some of this as part of just what we talked about, you see, uh, 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 because uh, it says that 2-2-2022 marks a new beginning for those who want to escape uh, 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 the negativity uh, of their past uh, and to see how they can grow um, uh, or break bad with that negativity, grow into positivity, and explore new you know, uh, possibilities. For each astrological sign, uh, the stars have a different message in store on this date to make sure you know, uh, that you uh, check out you know, that, uh, that horoscope. I don't do horoscopes because it starts with horror, and I'm not you know, straight up into horrors, but I think this might be something positive I may have to check out at some point. And so uh, uh, this 222 apparently is some kind of an angel number, right? Uh, so in numerology, different numbers carry different significance. And when a number repeats itself, the energy is even stronger. Repeating numbers usually mean the angels are trying to communicate with us and knowing the meaning of each one holds the key to the message. 222 is one of the most powerful angel numbers. I didn't know that. This thing is angelic, (laughs) y'all. All right, the most powerful angel numbers and carries a variety of messages depending on what path you are currently on in your life, right? So using your intuition, right? Take that power back. Using your intuition, you can explore these messages and decide which one resonates with you and your life the most from such, for such a time as this. So there you have it. 2-2-2022. Energy, power, it's yours. And so you can be, you can become the true you in 2022 because that's what it's about. This has been Faith Without Borders, beloved. So glad you're able to join us. Uh, we will be on every two weeks. Uh, so every uh, first Wednesday and every second Wednesday, we'll be on live. And then we're going to be posting the recorded versions of our uh, show, you know, every second and fourth weeks. And I want to thank Felicia for coming on board to support us with that, you know, so that we can get this out, uh, edit it. You know, she is going to put her touch on it. And then we will get it out, you know, uh, to you. Thanks for allowing us to be with you in so many ways. Sylvia Jackson says, happy birthday, Felicia. Uh, the folk in New York says, happy birthday. Uh, folk in, in, in Berkeley says, happy birthday. Oh, my goodness. Hey, uh, 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 let me give you her address. So you all can send her some gifts. It's not just enough to say <laughs> happy birthday. <laughs> Thanks for being with us. We'll see you next time, beloved. Uh, go. And become beloved community. Peace out.